So that is our main contribution. So a game theoretic um, model for assessing a situation where the user wants to decide whether to keep the assets in-house and obviously spend some efforts on protecting them there or to outsource this and put it on the cloud. And uh, the main point here is the um, concept of a, a shift. So what we're doing is we're shifting the, the asset and also the vulnerabilities to the cloud and then when they're on the cloud, it could change. Vulnerabilities could be less severe or there could be other vulnerabilities. We just simply don't know. And that's what we are trying to address. So um, to our knowledge, that's the first user-centric model. Um, there are a couple of models out there on risk assessment using Game 3 for the cloud, but none of them are from the perspective of the user. They're more on perspective of the actual cloud provider. So in game theory, we need to get used to a certain amount of um, formalisms, but we'll try to keep this simple. So basically, um, the game G here is written as a set, and essentially what matters is um, the players. So a game consists of players, and they do certain actions. Game theory is very important and useful in the, in the security because it models non-cooperative behavior, and obviously there could be nothing less non-cooperative than an attacker and a defender. So the so-called security games are at the moment very popular in, in the research where we're using the game theory and you might have heard the inventor of game theory in case you've seen the movie um, Beautiful Mind tragically passed away last week or the week before in a car accident which is uh, very, very sad really, he was 78. Um, John Nash is cited by all the papers on the, on the game theory because he came out with the concept of the Nash equilibrium. I will try to explain and motivate that a little bit further down the line in the talk. Okay, so in our game we have two players. We have the user and the attacker, and then we have a certain amount of strategies. So these are the, the actions, the possible actions that we can do. So on behalf of the, the user, he can either leave the asset um, on his system or put it on the cloud. So a little bit cryptic um, variables here, but it helps us later for the formal model. And the attacker um, will decide to either attack the, the user or the cloud. Now the attacker doesn't know where the asset is, and we're excluding the case where the asset, where the attacker might not want to attack at all. This is just for simplicity. You have to start with a simple model, and hence we are looking at a two action per player model. And it's only a two player model, because um, that's the main assumption here. It makes a difference in terms of the complexity of the model. If you go from two players to three players, there's actually a, a problem with the um, efficiency where you can actually solve the game in the end. So we are excluding the cloud provider at the moment from the game, which is maybe somewhat artificial, but that's what we've done at this stage. And we are taking the two other players, so the user and the attacker, and we make a couple of other assumptions as well. So what happens if there is um, an external attack on the cloud? So this could still happen. There might be, well, defended, but there could still be an attack. We're assuming that in this event, the um, cloud provider has actually drawn up an SLA, so a, a service level agreement with the user to say that if there is such an attack, they will actually pay a compensation to the user. So we are not assuming that the user loses out because of an external attack. What we are interested in is the internal attacks. So what we're assuming here, and um, I think it's realistic, that the um, cloud provider himself might actually be interested in doing something he shouldn't do. So in other words, we are assuming that there might be some loss of trust towards the cloud provider. So we introduce a parameter t. If t equals 1, then the cloud provider is fully trusted. If parameter t is zero, then we would not at all trust the cloud provider, so we wouldn't know at all what he actually does with our stuff. He could steal all our assets and sell them off or whatever, and then there's some sort of value in between, between zero and one. So that's the main um, point here of our research, and which is what we believe uh, the, the main novelty as well. Now, um, how does it work in the security game? It's essentially like a benefit-cost analysis, really. So what we're doing is for each possible combination of actions, we need to come out with the cost, 
and the benefit that would arise to the different players. And then we basically, from this one, then we can compute the Nash equilibrium, which then can predict what players might want to do or what they will do, assuming, of course, they stick to the, this model. So we're assuming that everyone knows about the model and that they will stick to it. So um, these are when you brainstorm the different cost functions that you might have. Um, it's, you don't really have time to look at all of them, but just a couple of them. So for example, um, there might be a fee. So the user um, incurs a cost if they subscribe to the cloud. So here, for example, the CU fee would be such a, a quantity, and there's a certain of damage that arises when assets get um, hacked into, get um, attacked, either on the user or on the cloud. And then really, the, the interesting formula here is this one here. Let's maybe pick this one here. So when I say C subscript A, superscript A, this is the um, cost an attacker would have if they attack the cloud. So what we're saying is we can't really compute this. We don't know how safe the cloud is. And that's obviously exactly the problem. So what we're assuming here is um, let us introduce the trust we have in the cloud as a parameter. So saying, let's say if T is one, so we trust the cloud entirely, then as you can see, one minus one gives to zero. So then you get to the minus one, so one divided by zero, it's obviously not defined, but it's kind of infinity. So effectively what it would mean is that um, if I can completely trust my cloud provider, then the attacker would have such a hard time attacking that he basically wouldn't do it. So here, the cost would be infinity. Equally, if T is a, is a zero, if I can't trust the cloud provider, then actually the cost would be the same as attacking my own system. So we're assuming here that our own system isn't very well secured. So if I don't trust the cloud provider, I might as well protect it myself. But that's the idea behind this formula. And here it's a similar reasoning. So here we have the the damage function. So um, that's just to motivate where, where we're coming from. Once you've got the, the cost functions, you also need to think of the, the benefit functions. So similarly here, the benefit of the attacker when they attack uh, the asset on the cloud or on the user system. And also um, then again trying to formulate the um, dependency on the trust. So if um, the cloud provider here, the value t is one, it would mean that the attacker here does not get any benefit from attacking because it would be too well protected. So that, that's the link between those quantities. So now um, this um, rather horrible matrix here defines our game because basically what it says is um, for each row and each column you have the different actions. So for example, this column here is the um, strategy where the um, attacker attacks the user. This column is where the attacker attacks the cloud. And this row is where the user keeps the assets in-house. And this row is where the attacker, sorry, the user outsources the asset to the cloud. So you get this matrix and in each particular scenario, we then come out with our cost benefit. So this is benefit minus cost, for example here. Benefit of an attack minus cost. And here, there are two values per cell. And the first value is the one for the user, cost benefit. And the second is the other player, so the attacker. So this is a little bit technical, but it's a good way to basically um, specify the game. That's effectively the, the normal form of our game. OK. so. Um, what we do then is we just um, make sure we put the um, trust parameter into the equation that um, I've showed this before. So when you substitute this, this is the, um, the final model. And now basically what you need to do is you need to, um, well, what you can do is you can solve this game. But also, first of all, we actually derive a um, theoretical property for the two extreme situations if the trust is 1 and the trust is 0. So basically, the idea would be that that gives an insight for the user 
assuming the user knows for himself his own cost and benefit functions. And he would have a rough idea about the attacker as well, those values. Um, and also he would be able to verify those conditions. Then in the first case, he would learn which of the actions, and here it would be the action where the user puts the asset on the cloud. So here the recommendation would be to the user, yes, do it, put it on the cloud. And um, the other effect would be, and that actually links in with your question here, um, the, the attacker would attack the user, but actually the asset wouldn't be there. Now the um, attacker doesn't know where the asset is. So we're assuming, and we were discussing this previously, and someone said, well, do you really know? The attacker will not know where the asset is. So we assume he does know. So it could actually happen. So in this scenario, we could predict that this is what will happen. So we're trying to predict what will happen. And then there's a similar condition in case you have the, the t equals zero. Now, um, this just highlights now the, the um, particular situation for t equals one. So um, if we have that condition from the previous slide, then we have a pure Nash equilibrium. Let me just explain what that means. A pure Nash equilibrium means that if we have a clearly defined strategy, so we have a clear recommendation, do this, so keep um, put the asset to the cloud, and then you will know that the attacker will attack you, but he will search for your asset, but it's not there anymore. Um, and um, this, um, you can basically compute this, and you know that this will happen. So that would be uh, an advice, basically, to that result. But then um, in, in practice, you don't always have that condition. So this is the, um, the other property about the equilibrium. So apart from the pure Nash equilibrium, you can also have the mixed Nash equilibrium. And the equilibrium means that this is a situation in the game where both players, attack and defender, they're happy to stay in that strategy because they know that any deviation, either on player one or player two, will mean that the cost-benefit changes unfavorably. So it will be more expensive. So they have no interest in changing. That, that's why it's important. So here, um, in a different scenario, so let's say trust value 0 0.5, and I guess you could wonder how can we actually compute the trust value? So for example, you could say, I trust um, Google 95%. I trust Dropbox, well, Dropbox, they're not actually storing, they actually have their own key for encrypting, so I don't trust it so much, maybe 85%. A startup company, well, maybe they're a bit inexperienced. So the idea is if you have that value and you come out with an estimate, then you can actually run software, you can find this on the web, it's quite easy to calculate the mixed Nash equilibrium, which will always exist. This is a theorem, that's the main point, it will always exist. And then our model would give you this, and it needs to be explained because now you have these probabilities. Now, what does it mean? It would say um, to, the, to the user, it would say with a probability of 0 0.25, can you please leave your asset um, on, your, on your whole system? And with a probability of 0 0.75, can you put it on the cloud? Then he'll say, well, hang on, I don't understand this. Either I put my asset on the cloud or I don't. So how this works is in, let's say, in a, a time span of 100 days, if on 25 days you do this, and on 75 <coughs> days you do this, and on average you would experience that, provided the attacker follows the same model, and they'll have these, these numbers here, but then you would minimize the risk. You would minimize the, um, the loss you would make, because you would maximize your benefit function. So that's the idea behind this model, and the game theory in, in general for the security. So let me conclude that, um, to our knowledge, that's the first user-centric model where we bring the trust in as a parameter. Um, I think trust is an important thing at the moment in computing and in security, but there's lots of more work to be done because now we could add more actions. What if the um, defender is not actually interested in defending the asset on his own system or the attacker will just stay completely passive and really we want to get the third player in so we have to find out about the three player um, games and um, we want to be realistic we want to make sure that this could be actually used by, by a company perhaps so that's the ultimate outcome of this research we're into year one of the PhD we still got two more years to go thank you very much for your attention